All right, guys, so we got a new product um, from my carbon fiber supplier, DC, DC Composites, and uh, these are really, really cool. So these are going to be for the shocks, the shock bearings. There's actually a little piece that goes down uh, for the bottom portion of the shock um, shaft as well. Uh, these are beautiful. Let me bring them up closer to the camera so you can take a look at them. But there's 3D printed uh, ribs that have a laminated uh, carbon fiber on them and then a carbon fiber shell. Um, it has grooves cut in it for the safety ropes that I have on. So we'll see how we're going to make those work. If you don't have the safety ropes, you won't have this groove. Um, the bottom piece, the small piece, plugs in to these two holes here and then that whole section floats on the shaft of the uh, shock and then you mount it with these two holes at the very top. So I'll go over the installation of these. You do have to take the shock off to do it. Uh, it's the only, only difficult part. Um, other than that, we'll get these all mounted up and then we'll see if it really helps the, uh, how much it helps the speed. All right, so I just want to show you a little bit. I took the, the screws out and you can see the shell of the shock. Um, several layers, it's fairly firm, very lightweight. Then here's the rib. It's, uh, it is printed and then it's got brass inserts for each screw. They're perfectly matched uh, holes. Um, this has the groove in it uh, and that's to accommodate the uh, safety rope on the landing gear that I have. So if you don't have that and you don't need that, um, then it will come with the, the uh, carbon will cover that up. But you can see on the inside that if you ever needed to open it up, you could just route out that, that piece of uh, carbon fiber that's laminated to the rib and you'd be good to go. So in order to install these though, we do have to remove the shock because these are gonna need to slide in over that uh, bottom shaft and the top shaft and then the top one, uh, which is actually this one, um, will be uh, attached to the top of this uh, uh, T here. So we're gonna drill a hole and then that can either be bolted or riveted. We're gonna rivet it and, and fasten it to that top part of the shock. Then we'll slide the shock cover up over the top of that and then uh, fasten it to the rib. Uh, and then the bottom one will be slid up over as well. So the, if we take the shock off, we can assemble all that. And then the same thing with this bottom one, it slides over and you can see these two holes that are in it. They go into, you can see these larger holes on this rib. This is the bottom rib. So this will go into those two holes like that. And then you just glue that as well to secure it. And then that whole part floats as the shock moves. And uh, very firm with the mount up top and streamlines the whole thing clear down to about right about here. Um, the only thing I have to figure out is the bottom section of the rope. Um, he didn't have a solution for putting it inside of this um, piece of the fairing. And this is optional. You can do the bottom part or not. Um, you can also do something to the cabane V. I chose not to because I still have the plans to put the belly pod there that's going to basically close up that whole section so I won't need fairing on that. Um, but the wing strut fairing fits this just fine so you can use that. Um, it's basically what this is. So you could get another section of that to go on there but it has to be uh, open in the back so you can slide it over like we do with the wing strut fairing. Um, but it is all this honeycomb pattern you can see. And it's really sweet and it does match the carbon fiber wing strut fairing. You can see the honeycomb on that as well. Uh, so it's going to be a really clean uh, look when it's all done. Everything's going to match and uh, we should pick up some speed. All right, so one of the ways to do this without having to jack the whole plane up is to put a tie strap in between the two. Keep lifting the wing up as you tighten this down and it'll eventually take the load off of that shock. Then you can remove it and the whole way of the plane is being held by the strap now, keeping that gear from, sli from sliding out. But now I've got the shock off, play around with uh, installing the fairing and then get it back on and we'll do the other side. All right, so two holes are drilled in there with the provided um, 
drill bit. Comes with the kit and then these two pop rivets. Per side. Just gonna go down in there. And we'll pull that rivet with the rivet squeezer. And that will be basically the, the shock portion install. Then we'll put the screws back in uh, with Loctite. And then I'm gonna figure out this bottom one and whether the bottom fairing is going to work okay with this rope setup. All right, so here's the second one with the rib uh, riveted to the top. You can see the the screw insets on the 3D printed rib to receive the actual cowling piece. Very nice. So these plugs in this one you can see where the holes are they line up with this rib so you're just going to glue this rib onto that one and that's what keeps the bottom fairing right here on there so that just slides over and then you glue this one in to the carbon fiber portion all right so the next step I'm going to take this rib out by undoing these screws. This one's out because it's the one that's mounted on there. And then I'm going to slide the fairing on and go ahead and mount it up to the shock. And then we'll get the shock back in place. All right, guys, so this is the basic fairing kit for the shock. It comes with the main section here. It's got the ribs on either end. And then it comes with the uh, rivets to fasten the top rib to the uh, shock T. So that is your fairing. They're beautiful, well-made. And there's the option, an optional um, shaft fairing as well. This will go on the bottom piece right here. Like that. And it, it'll fasten all the way up against there, but there's a, a ribbon there as well. And that can be purchased in addition to the main fairing kit. If you have the the uh, safety straps, it's probably best just to get the main section because the safety strap does not go through this bottom fairing. So anyway, that fits, uh, this fairing fits the one and three quarter, the two inch, which I have, and the two and a quarter, which is a carbon cub. So this fairing will fit any shock monster shock uh, up to two and a quarter. All right, I do wanna mention in order to slide all of this over the shock shaft you do have to take the bottom eyelet out so i'm just about to put that back in but you can see this bottom fairing that's flush with the bottom of the shaft how it comes all the way down is now being glued to the shock Right, guys so we got these things installed they look fantastic really happy with the workmanship on the uh, the way Donnie does these so let's go see if they're any faster we'll uh, warm up go up do some speed runs and see if we can pick up three or four miles per hour with these things all right just warming up here get ready to go flight test these shock fairings pretty excited about this one um, it's been a couple I had a couple ideas on how to come up with a good fairing, but Donnie at DC Composites, the guy that does the wing strut fairings for us, just did an amazing job. I mean, definitely next level from what you could do at home in your garage. So um, the, the finish on them is absolutely perfect. It's got that same beautiful honeycomb outer layer carbon uh, fabric that looks really cool and matches the wing struts. So I'm hoping to also pick up a little bit of speed too. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of the fairing. So if we can see, you know, a three to five mile per hour increase, I'd be really happy about that. Now, there is still the cabane V that's not fared. And so something we can do with that is it is the same size tubing as the wing strut stuff. So we already have a mold for that. So we might be able to incorporate in uh, short sections for the cabane V as well. I didn't want to do that to mine yet because I am planning on doing that um, a belly pot which is going to help fare that in so 
Um, there's a little bit of improvement that still can be made if you fare that top cabane V. But uh, as far as the shock itself, we're all fared out and uh, go see what it does. So as soon as we're done warming up, I'll turn the camera back on. see some some speed improvement we do have the slats on so our cruise speed's been right around 99 to 100 with the uh, rpm set at 82 to 8300 rpm to, you know depending on how it feels so that's kind of the benchmark so let's go check it out bent air traffic good box taken three four be left turn out All right, so I'm seeing about 104. Gotta bounce around because it's turbulent, but maintaining level, I'm seeing about 104 indicated, 106 true airspeed. That's with the uh, slats on. So if I take the slats off, I pick up another three to four miles per hour. So then I'm back up right around 108, 109, right around the 110 uh, speed for true airspeed. That's as good, a, if not better, than the Grove landing gear with the shock wheel from Behringer on it. With, but now I've got the shock monster landing gear with the fairings and the gear legs covered. So I've almost eliminated the drag from that landing gear, the excess of drag over the Grove and the shock wheel uh, design. That's pretty cool. Yeah, just cruising around, 104 right now. I've gone many directions. Um, yeah, this is pretty cool. Very bumpy, as you can see. As we know, speed varies with temperature because temperature changes your horsepower. It also changes the density of the air for indicated speed. So we're kind of also looking at the true air speed in comparison as well. But there's definitely an improvement of speed, three to four miles per hour with this this last fairing upgrade on the. Uh, on the shocks on the shock monster landing gear so really impressive it's not a big deal install you can do it in a day no problem just gotta uh, support the plane take the shock off put the fairings on put the shock back on you're good to go all right so pull back lower rpm to try to get the same cruise speed that i was getting before so i'm reducing my uh, fuel consumption i'm at 8,000 rpms doing the 99 to 100 and level flight. So you can look at it two different ways. You can either look at it reducing your RPM for the same airspeed by 200 RPM, or you can look at it as increasing the speed at your given RPM of about three to four miles per hour. That's pretty cool. So now I can fly around at 8,000, still get my 100, 100 true airspeed. Bump it up to 83 for my you know, faster cruise RPM, 104. Indicated, so that's 106 true today. That's so taking it from a you know 100 to 104. Airspeed don't lie, man. That's freaking cool. So an impressive improvement for such a small area. That just goes to show you how much drag is created by those unfair shocks. Yeah, so now I got the power pulled back. It's even quicker in a descent. So it'll be interesting when we get into the pattern here slow up and see how if it takes longer to slow down you can kind of tell that when it, like when i had the grove gear on with the shock wheel from behringer when you pull the power it took longer to slow down to that flap speed so i'm wondering if i'll see that same thing so i'm gonna keep the speed up around 100 and then when i pull back to slow down to put flaps out i'll see how long it takes and i do have the slats on so 
Yeah, Ben Air traffic, Kip Fox entering the left downwind for a 3 4 equal stop. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the power back. See how long it takes us to slow to 80. Not bad. Not, not as slippery as with the Grove gear at all. Which I like, you know. You pull the power back, you slow down. Bent traffic, good box on final, 3 4. Bent traffic, helicopter, 12 series taking off on Bravo. We got that uh, final traffic. Ooh. That was unexpected. Boy, we got a big old kick to the right there on the final. That was crazy. Listen, guys, that was awesome. I mean, to be able to take a product, install it in a day, and go out and get three to four miles per hour faster, I mean, that's it's just awesome. It looks great, really cleans up that whole section, um, and you get much more streamlined airflow, increase in airspeed. Um, so overall, there's everything about them is positive. Now, if you really want to get picky, the only thing is you can't service the shock as easily, but all you have to do is undo the screws and then slide the fairing down, and then you have access to your um, shock uh, uh, stems for servicing the shock. So overall, I, it not, only, not only is it faster, looks good, but having those enclosed in there is going to keep that whole shock me mechanism cleaner as well. That's one of the things I've noticed, especially when you're out flying off airport, is the dirt accumulation around the, where it's oily and greasy on those shocks. You're constantly cleaning it after every flight. And if you don't, you're going to get more wear out of those parts. So by covering them up, you're going to keep all that dust and dirt and everything out of there. And every once in a while, you can pull that, sh that down and take a look at it and make sure everything is good. And if you need to service it, you service it. So um, I'm super happy with them. If you guys are interested, this size fairing fits all the kit foxes from four through seven if you have the shock monster shock on there also fits all carbon cubs and super cubs um, we are coming out with a lar slightly larger one for the two and a half inch shocks and up for the four place airplanes that are using the shock monster but the one and three quarter two inch which is on the kit fox one and three quarters on the kit fox four two inch on the sevens five through seven and then the two and a quarter which is on the carbon cubs this one fairing here will fit all of those. So if you guys are interested want to get a hold of me, uh, the ad's at the end of the video with the, uh, the email link and my phone number. Give me a call. I'd love to get a set of these ordered up for you. So thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. And we'll see you on the next one.